Uh, I'm Rick James. Helen Reddy. <laughs> I think we, we were just too pretty. Howdy, folks. I'm Steve McDaniel. Uh, Tommy Lords, drummer for Shock Graffiti. Mike Myers from Destroyer. Can you tell me to talk into the mic, though? Hi, I'm Butch E.M. My name is Tom LaFever. Was I in a band in the 80s? John Risco. I was, wasn't I? I am Brian Wolf. I played bass for Vicious Brecca, Destroyer, Fantasy, and Shock Graffiti. Retaliator, Whiplash, Misery. I am Matt Wolf, aka Matt Metal. Riff Raff, Brian Shame. The rest of them I can't remember. I'm Tony Morales. I was in the band, and still am. What the hell are we talking? Yeah. I'm still am in the band called Kraken. Hello, I'm Larry Werner. I played, uh, it's my turn. It's out of time already. I played lead guitar for Jolly Roger. John, my brother, was also in the band. I'm Brian. I play uh, lead singer for Jolly Roger. Jody Hawk. Um, singer, Adam West, Enzo. Tony Dalmas, drums. Frank Sarkozy, drums. The original drummer of Vicious Barreca. I was the founding father, along with Michael J. Chills, of the band Chills. I'm uh, Michael J. Chills. I was a uh, lead vocalist for Chills, The Mob, and Uncle Remus. Then, the founding father along with Michael J. Chills of The Mob, the founding father, along with Mr. Jody Hawk of Enzo. I wear the belt. <laughs> I am the heavyweight champ of metal in the Lehigh Valley. Nice. Me and the King, Tony Downs. Uh, Brian Zimmerman played with Dirty Blonde uh, guitar, lead rhythm guitar. Everybody was big. Everybody was big, except my hair wasn't big, but everybody else's hair was big, Personas were big. There was a big scene in the valley that really nobody knew but the valley. And the Lehigh Valley, everyone was always kind of, who's going to be the band to get out of here? Who's going to make it? We appealed to the musicians because the musicianship was was at a high level. Um, we had a really good looking singer. <laughs> <laughs> it smells a lot like citronella. I'm, I'm going to put it all in. Everyone, you know, came to see each other's bands. But the cool thing was, their fans were our fans, vice versa, and everybody went to see everybody. So everybody really was very optimistic, so there were a lot of bands playing, a lot of bands, a lot of original music. I think it was a great time. We never gave in. Whatever band that you were in and the style that you were playing, damn it, that's what we do. Yeah, it definitely felt like there was a scene. The problem is it was all pussy rock being signed, and, uh, you know, we were all playing, or doing stuff that was heavier. It was cool. Just putting those three or four chords together and making it as loud and, and heavy as you could. It seemed very real. That that type of music had gained a lot of momentum. You could go out to a club on a Thursday night, on a Friday night, on a Wednesday night, and play original music, and people re were responsive to it. They liked it. They wanted to hear it. They seemed like they couldn't get enough. Even on weekdays, you could play at a place like Bill Daniels and you'd still draw 500 people. Or they'd have Kamikaze night at the Castle Inn, and there'd be several hundred people there. Now you're lucky on a weekend with clubs today, if you can even draw close to that. I remember seeing Tees. Tees was the big deal. That was the, that, they were the first band. Bill, Bill Daniels Rock Palace. Bill Daniels, yeah. yeah. The guys in Tees wore more makeup than most women. Janice and I also mimicked Tees. We had our little rough house. Tees rags, rags. They were really the kings of the, the poofy hair and the, the crazy stuff. It reminded me of, don't, don't get mad at me, rough house. It was kind of like Sigmund and the Sea Monsters with big hair, like seaweed, they had seaweed on and stuff like that. We work factory jobs in the day and at night we would go out and play. We do four nights at a pop, play 16 sets in four days, you know. Lehigh Valley was good, we had a lot of fun up here. The music hall was cool, it was big, it was right next to that strip club. What was cool about the music hall was it was, you know, a, a concert yeah. type atmosphere, whereas these clubs, it wasn't the whole, whole thing. Okay, we're standing in front of what used to be the most quintessential and classic of all Lehigh Valley rock and roll clubs, the Airport Music Hall. 
And now, unfortunately, it is a wine and spirits shop. Everything played the music hall. You had a punk scene, you had the underground metal scene, you had thrash metal, death metal, but you also had a hardcore scene. I used to go see like Typo Negative and all those thrash bands that would come in. Although it wasn't a big thrash band, I was just going there more or less for, to hang out and to, and to meet the chicks. We broke onto the scene, probably the music hall, the airport music hall, with like TT Quick, Washed. Bands like that took us under their wing. I saw Manowar there, uh, I saw Cheap Trick there, I saw Don Dawkins' solo band there. Um, I washed and seen there millions of times. Well, when the Nationals first started coming through, that's what really started to get special about the place. I mean, I was seeing bands from, you know, Suicidal to Pantera to Danzig to Soundgarden, I mean, doing their... I, I saw the Appetite for Destruction tour for the first time. Who the hell's Guns N' Roses? And they come out and ask, see your sister in a Sunday dress? <laughs> the hell is that? The music hall was something so different. There was such a vibe there. Um, and just such an opportunity. There were, if there was somewhere like that now, there'd be a lot more signed bands out of this area, I think. When that whole grunge deal came down, all of a sudden all the club scenes started. You couldn't, you couldn't go play original hard rock or heavy metal and have any interest or get paid. or You, know, you, could, you couldn't make anything work. You know, Nirvana changed everything. And that's, that's, that's the bottom line. We were all trying to get that elusive, magical record deal that was always kind of floating around that everyone was grasping, for the, throwing their hands in the air trying to grab it. And for the most part, no one ever got one. <laughs> but, you know, he had a hell of a lot of fun trying. Yeah.